this idea came uh, like a month ago when we started seeing this trend around the world uh, about the persecution on digital security researchers, mainly based on two cases. The first one is uh, the case of Olabini in Ecuador, and another one that we've been working very closely, that is a case in Argentina uh, for a, about a security researcher called Javier Smaldone. And then we start realizing that this is like some, a, a very big issue in, uh, in, in a global level. So we thought that this year ITF would be a great opportunity to come up with a statement, not just for these cases, but for future cases, to have all settle a position on what we think is important, why we think it's important to protect their work. So we work on this uh, general statement. As I said, this is not aimed at just one digital researchers, but for all the work that they are doing, and how important it is uh, to protect them because of the work they do uh, and how useful it is for the human right defense. You know. Can you raise your hand if you've heard of the two cases that Gaspar mentioned, the case of Ola Bini and Javier Smaldone in Argentina? Okay, so a decent amount of people have heard. I just uh, would like to add something that uh, Javier Smaldone is not the first guy that suffers this kind of prosecution in Argentina. Since 2015, we suffered, he's the third one, in fact. So I want to mention uh, Joaquin Sorianello and Ivan Barrera Oro as well, because they were prosecuted by different reasons, but they all uh, are part of the team of people working against electronic voting in Argentina. That's a common thing they have. Um, there is a team of uh, uh, security researchers working on electronic voting, against electronic voting in Argentina, and it sounds like a strange thing that three of them were raided and, and prosecuted. Um, so I, I would like to mention that Javier Javier's case is a really serious one. We are very worried about his situation, his situation and his family's situation as well, because this is not something that happens to one person, it happens to a family. And Javier has a daughter and a son, and they were also surveilled. They were also followed by the police. And so his family is also involved in all these uh, things. Uh, but I, I want to mention that uh, the, the common issue they have is that they are fighting against electronic voting. And we know that when a government wants to implement this kind of technologies, which are basically unsecure, not trustworthy for democracy, uh, the hackers community is very active in, in trying to raise attention on the problems of these technologies, and that's why some governments, especially Mauricio Macri's government in Argentina, um, are, are uh, very hard on prosecuting this kind of researchers. So you mentioned one common element, which is gaps in legislation, but not only the gaps in legislation, but also the pushing of very specific kinds of legislation that are harmful in themselves. For instance, we just mentioned the trend uh, to weaken encryption. There's also another trend about criminalizing speech. In some cases, it is more obvious, and we can all do a, a letter and, and go like, as human rights defenders against that, but in some other cases like this, this has a terrible chilling effect for dissent for, in, for instance, in the Twitter sphere of Argentina, when we knew that this very vocal activist, it's a very vocal activist on Twitter, um, uh, started being raided and so on, there's a lot of people who felt really scared about what could happen to them uh, in this context, okay? The case of Javier Esmaldone is very telling in the sense that there was a judge involved in this, that when the police started creating this investigation that has absolutely no ground, uh, one of the things that they used as a clue it's all clues, there's no evidence, by the way, to get this guy raided and prosecuted. Um, one of the things that was mentioned as a clue was that this guy was able to program in the same language that was used to create a, 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 a malware, okay? Um, things like that, or for instance, that this guy hates the police because of the things that he tweets. These things are the clues that a judge, a federal judge in Argentina, rubber stamped to say, okay, it's okay to go and raid this person. So the accountability to the judiciary 
is key in this element. Ignorance to this level, let's say this is ignorance and not malice, for instance. It is unforgivable. These kind of things uh, are really touching into the future of what the public space means. And the ability to be able to use technology to basic participation is elemental for the future of democracy. I think it's not a problem with Olabini particularly, but with many local cases, it's hard to reach and to get coverage from traditional media outlets. And being, and I guess, I suppose these cases should be a high profile cases and it would be important to everyone to be aware because we are talking here about criminalization, we are talking about security issues. Uh, so I think that one of the challenges that we are facing right now in terms of protecting digital security researchers is how to get those media, traditional media outlets to communicate uh, why it's important to, to protect these this human rights. In our experience in Argentina is that the media covers the official version. Uh, when they cover the case of Javier, they treated him as guilty. They published a picture of him with his daughter on the media, on the big media. Uh, something like that happened with Joaquin when uh, he was uh, prosecuted because he uh, talked about vulnerabilities in the election system. Um, the, the, the Minister of Security of the City of Buenos Aires said we stopped a hacking an attack on the election and they showed Joaquin as uh, guilty. So the media is not only not covering, but when they cover it, they cover it with the official version, with the police version, with the, with the government version. So it is a, a real huge uh, uh, problem we have to deal with. It's not only that they are not covering. They are uh, covering the wrong way and they are publishing them with pictures, with their families, with their names, uh, affecting um, seriously their reputation, their capacity to uh, get a, a, a job or their, their uh, yes, their, their, their name publicly, so the media are part of this. We need to talk to the media so they stop treating the hackers community as criminals, because it's easy to show all these bad hackers hacking things and they are criminals, and it's, it's a narrative that the media is uh, pushing since 20 years ago, I, I guess. And it's, it's hard to, to remove this idea of uh, a hacker is a criminal. We should do that. Yeah, we've had the same, as you know, in Ecuador with Ola Bini. It's been a complete trial by media, as Amnesty have said. Um, the leaking of wrong information, statements, even before he was arrested. You know, the president of Ecuador recently went on TV and made all sorts of allegations, and he hasn't even had a trial. So it's, it's a big question. I don't know how we do it. We'd like to join our actions. In our case, uh, we are working a lot on Javier Esmaldone case. It's been a very rocky start and we really need international help to uh, ask the state to comply with simple uh, democratic and human rights rules. So everyone who is interested in joining to those actions, you can of course contact me after this session or Bea Busaniche, who is also very involved with this case. I would just like to close with a, um, a, a thank you very much for all the support to Javier, who is a very good friend of us. He's, a, he's been a part of our team since longer, I, I would like to remember. Uh, I know him from 20 years now around that. He's, he's a very active person in our community, so I would like to thank on behalf of Javier all your support. And I would like to add something else. It's not only protecting the people working uh, in human rights field, but 
the whole security community, whether they work on human rights or not, whether they recognize themselves as uh, uh, um, working on human rights or fundamental rights, everyone doing security research is doing a big service to the community because they know how things work and they can alert on vulnerabilities that could be crucial for national security, for security, for privacy or for whatever. Uh, I think we need to try to figure out how to protect all these people uh, so they could feel free to show the vulnerabilities. Many times, business sector is not open to receive their re reports. Many times they are. Many times they have good practices. Uh, but in many countries, and in Argentina this is the case, uh, there's lots of people that doesn't even understand how uh, in, in InfoSec community works, and that poses a big risk, not only for the InfoSec community, but for everyone using technologies that have vulnerabilities because there's no perfect uh, technology. We need these people, and we need to figure out how to protect their work, their work whether they work on human rights or not. Every uh, researcher on security who is working for uh, report a vulnerability or, um, uh, uh, or raise awareness on uh, security issues or whatever they do, they are very, it, it's a very valuable uh, work for our society. So we have to find out how to protect them, them all, not only the people working on human rights. <laughs>